Adversity, bring it. The struggle, I welcome. Snooze on life, never know. I am Dave Virginia, and this is the No Snooze Podcast. Come on. Welcome back, No Snooze Podcast, episode 177. As always, I'm in the booth with a new three. We have Katie Long Island, Cepeda, Claudio The Voice, Valenzuela, and I am Dave The Body, Regina. <laughs> Katie Cepeda is a powerful example of embracing change and pursuing passion. Katie began her journey with a background and education in psychology to then transitioning to a career in the legal field for seven years. Although she enjoyed her work at a very respected law firm, Katie took the courageous step to leave her established career and pursue a calling in the self-love and personal development space. She reinvented herself as an independent digital entrepreneur using her wisdom and skills to guide others on YouTube and social platforms, specifically focusing on self-love and the law of attraction. Today, Katie has become a trusted mentor to thousands. Her most recent endeavor has been authoring Elevated Glow, Transform from the Inside Out, which is a workbook compiled of life lessons, empowering affirmations, and a 66-day guided journal. Katie is a great friend of mine, and I couldn't be more grateful to have her as a guest today. Katie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> You're so welcome. Um, we went to school together, just giving background here. So uh -huh. it's been it's been a long time. It's been like 13 years. Yes. Is that accurate? Right. Right. So 13 years. But we, you know, kind of lost touch just like everybody does through the through through college. It's ironic how that happens. Right. We're talking about that all fair. Uh, but then just recently we well stayed in touch, I'd say, socially over the years via the platforms, Instagram specifically. Uh, but then just recently we went on a catch up <laughs> that lasted hours and hours. <laughs> we had a great conversation and it was wonderful to catch up with you. It was it was. <laughs> and so, again, very Dave Regina-esque. We went to a steakhouse. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. And she didn't finish her steak CV. So what do you think I did? He, Clearly you ate it. He ate it off the bone. <laughs> I said, listen, I know, I know this might be a little inappropriate here, but I'm going to eat this and I'm going to chew the bone. So I opened myself right up to you, Katie. Right. <laughs> I, I appreciated question. that. What kind of steaks were we uh, were on the table? What was going on there? We did the ca did we do the cowgirls? They're called. I think so. Cowgirl. 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 Oh, cowgirl. Cow oh, sorry. Whoops. Cowboy ribeye, maybe. Cowboy ribeye. Yeah, no, yeah, it was yeah. Cowgirl. Cowgirl ribeye. I think it was cowgirl. We both did the same steak too. So. We did. We did. I looked at it. It was kind of a baby steak to me, but you know she had some leftovers. So I didn't even know there was a thing like cowgirl. We or, could be. We could be a little so off. But catch steak. NYC. If yeah. you haven't checked it out, yep. check it out. A little pricey, but enjoy it. Um, so, Katie, talk to me. I guess um, I always like to start from from the beginning. You grew up in Long Island, right. which why I gave you the nickname <laughs> because back in college, <laughs> I, I had a bunch of friends that were from Long Island. Mm -hmm. The way normal people say Long Island is Long and then Island, but the way people from Long Island say Long Island, they say the island part with a G. So it's Long Island. But you're, you're speaking on everybody. I Guyland. say Long Island. Okay, that sounds normal. Right? Okay. I don't have like a lo strong Long Island accent. No, you don't. I Not don't, at all. Yeah. Talk to me about how you grew up in Long Island or I guess where it all started. Well, I actually grew up in Queens. Um, I was about, yeah, from the age up till like four, I grew up in a two bedroom apartment with like 10 people in it. Hey, sounds fire. You're <laughs> so obviously like four. What, what's, your, what's your background? I'm Dominican. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I was going to yeah. say of Hispanic descent. It was my grandparents, my great grandma, my mom, my aunt, my two uncles, me, um, and yeah, my, my cousin as well. And that was until I lived i moved out 
and lived with my dad until, yeah, we moved out with my dad when I was like five. Um, and then we moved to Flushing. We were there for about, until I was like 12, 11 actually. And then we moved to Long Island. They wanted us to have a better life. We actually bought a house. We were, we went from having an apartment. My mom had my brother and then we lived in a really nice house in Massapequa and I was there until my parents got a divorce and then I went to college. I would always come visit Long Island, but yeah, it was nice growing up in Long Island. So I guess one growing up, the bachata went crazy in that household. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's poor a thing. neighbors, poor downstairs <laughs> neighbors. That's a thing in itself. Yeah. What did you what did you learn from that experience? And I guess you know what's odd? So I guess as we're younger, you don't realize the living situation because it's just so normal. Right? It was normal. And it was probably fun. Yeah. It what was. did you learn being in an environment with your family it was back then? It was so nice. Um, I didn't see it as, oh, my God, we're crammed in an apartment, two bedroom apartment. It was more so there was always I was always with my grandparents. My mom was working and going to school um, to get her degree. So I was raised primarily by my grandparents. Um, but it was nice having my cousin there every single holiday. We would all get together. It was just a big family. It felt, you know, I was never alone. My dad would come visit me. I just remember vividly like him coming in the window, seeing me as a little girl <laughs> and bringing me like dolls. Um, but yeah, it was nice to grow up and, you know, it was always a party. That was my grandma's favorite thing. Birthday celebrations are really big in my family. So there was always bachata, like you said. Hey. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this white boy goes crazy music. with bachata. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so I've heard. Um, <laughs> but music. So it was just, it was really nice. It, it didn't seem like, oh, and I would sleep with my grandma. So my great grandma. Um, so it didn't seem like it was too much. So you know what's great? I mean, it's society, right? Like, and obviously back then there, ha there was some level of, um, financial issues right at that time right. like even for me growing up you lived in where we lived because of the finances right, right when do you think it it changed like so for me i grew up mount vernon new york which is you know it's in westchester county but some would say that's on the lower end of westchester County. most mm -hmm, would say it's on the lower mm -hmm, end of westchester mm -hmm. county to then witnessing a high school in greenwich connecticut which is the, literally one of the most affluent communities on the on planet earth mm -hmm. right and it wasn't until i went to high school that i realized like oh money's a real thing right, right? but before then you never really worried about it was it the same for you it in massapequa is same. that when you realized right it was because um i went to public school and i saw you know you see things like fights being in the hallway to my mom saying you are not going to public like when we moved to Long Island, she was she looked for a private school. She did everything to make sure that my brother and I had the best education. And I fought her. I was really angry. There was for a whole year she was driving to Queens to still take me to junior high school over there um, until she was like, I can't do this because then she was driving back to Long mm -hmm. Island to then come pick me up. So days when there were snowstorms and it was a lot for her to sit in traffic for an hour just to pick me up from school. Um, but I saw the difference, something that, you know, I really took for granted and I was so hesitant in not going to private school after I was so grateful for it because there were no fights. There were, it was just completely different. There wasn't the bullying that I kind of dealt with in, you know, school, the public schools, uh, in Queens. And so it was a big difference. It made a big difference in, you know, it, you saw what money can do. And I saw, I started to value I guess money in a sense, because I saw my mom working three jobs to just put my brother and I through school. Mm. Um, so yeah, I would say, you know, as mm. I got older, I, it's, I became aware of how money does make right. a difference. And shout out to mom, wonderful woman. I had the opportunity to meet her. So shout out to Fran. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say is the best lesson that you've learned from her sacrifice um, raising you and your brother? Um, and I guess how you implement that lesson into your life today. I think that she did whatever she could to make it happen. And seeing how much it, she's just an independent woman. She's never depended on anybody. And not to say that, you know, we shouldn't depend. Like, not, I know there's this whole big thing going on with like women and, you know, wanting to kind of 
also playing that masculine role, but I think that my mom had no other option. Um, she had to show up and she's shown me, uh, you know, you make it happen no matter what, like regardless of whatever you're going through of whether finances are tight or like she did her back was against the wall. There were many times where I saw her cry and I'm just grateful because she really taught me that work ethic. Mm -hmm. Um, but also she was so loving and so caring and so nurturing and she still kept that. She taught me, I mean, I, I grew up really fast cause I had to, you know, kind of take care of my brother after school. And I kind of had to sacrifice things that I wanted to do, such as like kick line or track or what's, what's kick line. Kick line is like a dance team that they do uh, for you like did dance in Manhattanville too. I didn't do dance. Oh, what'd you do? I did dance after. After Manhattan. I did oh, dance okay, after right, Manhattan. Right. I saw videos, so I. <laughs> I did dance after Manhattanville, but um, I did. I wanted to do these things, but I, you know, was helping my mom within helping raising my brother as well mm -hmm. and going after school, making sure that he had something to eat. And, you know, it was at the time it was frustrating because I was like, why can't I do what these kids are? You know, you see right. it as. But after you see how much how much she put into just making sure that, you know, we were fed. We, there was never food missing. There was, you know, we never had to leave school. There were times where she, I saw her worrying, like, how am I going to pay tuition this month? You know, and tuition was really expensive for me alone for high school. It was like $8,000. Wow. So, you know, it just yeah, she didn't her, have to do that. She didn't have to do it. We right. could have easily went to a public school where there were, gangs and everything going on because we lived in Massapequa, but our school district was Amityville and that's not one of the greatest school districts. So she did everything to, mm. you know, make sure. And, and I see like, had I been raised in Queens or, and kept going, I would have be completely different person. I would, you know, I, I spoke completely differently from when I lived in Queens to when I lived in Long Island. And, you know, I just, grew up differently and mm -hmm. I don't take that for granted. I'm super grateful. That's beautiful. Um, one of the things that, you know, I, I really value about you is the energy that you always bring. And especially, you know, since we've had the opportunity to to catch up and the more conversations that we've had, you always bring a very high level of, of energy and, it, and it's a pleasant thing to, to really be around. You talk a lot about being mindful of your vibrations. Right. Right. So what is a vibration? <laughs> and then give us a tip to instantly raise that vibration. Right. I mean, there's a frequency scale, right? And the lowest levels of frequency are jealousy, anger, guilt, shame, um, and as you go up on this scale, you go up towards, you know, contentment. Um, the highest forms of frequency is love and gratitude, right? Ultimately enlightenment. And you attract things based off of like things that come into your reality are based off of the level of frequency that you're vibrating. So think of it as the things that you want are on the uh, radio station 97.1. Hot 97, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> right? So think of it that way. And then think about the like you are currently really upset and angry and you're on the vibration of like 6.61 a.m. Oh, so you're very far away. Very far away, right? Now, in order for you to get the things that you want, or let's say the things that you want are on the vibration of 97 hot 97 <laughs> you the things that you want you have to in a sense tune into that frequency because let's say you're you're elevating at that 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 other frequency you're only going to hear what's on that radio station internally are you talking externally externally okay right you're going to see things and, and well, I'm saying here because you technically we right. hear things on the radio uh -huh. but you're let's look at it that way where you're going to see things everything you're going to come across people who are angry you're going to whatever vibration that you're you know mm -hmm. emitting you're going to come across things in that frequency because you're more aware because of it. yes that's the awareness so if you're you angry you're going to come you're going to see people who are 
angry. You're going to see people are going to be probably rude to you. Uh, the traffic's going to annoy you. Whereas if you're vibrating on love and gratitude, you're going to feel like you're going to see things on that frequency. You're going to, mm. the things that you want are on a different vibration. So the high, if you know that the highest vibrations are love and gratitude, and that's where you ultimately attract the things that you most want in your life, why not? And I feel that, you know, it's so easy for us to be angry or, but what do you get out of that? Like what, what ultimately the only person that you're hurting is yourself, right? And, so, and those around you, honestly. And those around you. And so I feel that in me showing up and pouring into my cup, because it's really hard to show up and be happy all the time when you have things going on. But then when you sit there and you think about, okay, what are the things that I'm grateful for today, Right. And you think about, you know, it's easily like even for, for I would always say, like, even going to sleep, if you're going if you're angry, do not go to sleep angry. Think about 10 reasons as to why you're grateful for it. If something bad is happening, think about 10 reasons why you're grateful for that thing happening. You'll see how automatically there's no way that you can be in love and gratitude and in fear. It, it just it just doesn't exist. You can't you can't it, coexist in the same frequency so why not just shift that mm. you know yeah no i love that uh tony robbins talks a lot about that too um so i i love it now i guess if you are somebody who tends to vibrate at that low frequency how do you shift that and how do you do it like quickly um well gratitude is the one of the top things like it's impossible to be upset when you're thinking about things that you're grateful for. Mm -hmm. The fact that you woke up today, there are so many people who didn't wake up. Right. The fact that you can breathe, the fact that your arms are functioning, little things that we take for granted, the fact that we have walk, we can walk, the fact that, you know, we have uh, my grandparents are something that are really important to me. The fact that my grandparents that I get to speak to them, um, that I'm healthy, that I just there are so many things. And then you can, you know, take a list of when you take the list of the things that you're grateful for it's like okay that's one way mm -hmm. being in sunlight dancing energy like you hear when you listen to music doesn't it make you happy country music for me these days right? for whatever reason <laughs> you got a fast car I don't by the way <laughs> not to interject yep. did you see in the grammys yep. there was a performance oh, by you guys tracy chat first of all and actually the two the duo all, I, they asked me to be there and, <laughs> and I wasn't there. Uh, I had another obligation, yeah. if you will. Um, but yes, I did see it. Tracy Chapman and uh, Luke Combs. I thought it was really nice. This is so off topic, but I thought it was really I nice. <laughs> I thought it was really nice that Luke Combs gave Tracy Chapman the 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 glory and the shine there, you know, because it is her original oh, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you familiar with Fast Car? Yes, I Are am. you familiar with my rendition of Fast Car? I <laughs> sure am. Well, God bless you, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. <laughs> no, thank you for that. Um, forgiveness. Right. Right. This is another thing that you, you speak about. Um, you personally, again, you helped me um, realize about the importance of forgiveness mm -hmm. and how important it is to truly... I guess, release and move on from whatever it is that is lingering in your life in a negative way. Um, this could be death. This could be an injury holding you back. This could be a breakup. This could be a, a, a loss of a, a pet, really anything that's negative at one point in time, right? Can you share an exercise with us on how people can face their hardship and fully release this? Okay. Um, I think that writing a letter of forgiveness to anyone who's wronged you, uh, let's say you're holding resentment, anger, frustration at anyone, um, writing a letter of forgiveness to them, but not only them, you'll realize that when you write a letter of forgiveness to them and then to yourself after, because a lot of the times we don't realize how much shame and all of these things that we're holding and guilt. And again, like I said, back to frequency and vibrations, those are the lowest level that you can vibrate at. So when you forgive and you're focusing on writing this letter and you're just letting it all out on paper, um, you'll see how much is actually in there bottled up. And um, something that is good to do is once you write that letter, just burn it. And you'll realize like the weight that's lifted off your, your soldiers um, because the only person that you're honestly holding back is yourself. Let's say the person who has wronged you 
passes away. Now someone passed away and you're holding on that anger. And meanwhile, like they're not even here anymore. And it's just like, are you really going to let them hold you hostage from being free and feeling free? And so that writing that letter and just, you know, you don't have to give it to them. You don't have to know, but you shouldn't even wait for someone to. A lot of the times people don't even know that they hurt you or if they do know, sometimes they're not even sorry for it. They mm -hmm. don't really care. So, you know, think about it as like, who who do you think is the one that's being most hurt in this situation when you're angry at somebody? Yep. Is it that person? Because they're actually living their life doing them, whatever, happy. And you're over here holding on to something, being annoyed, like, and it's still constantly in the back of your mind with you not realizing it. Right. So that letter is so important and just letting it all out on paper. Um, I'll, I'll share this, too. So when when I'm hearing this and when we first spoke about it as a man, mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, this is corny. That's my honest, right? Mm -hmm. Like my honest, immediate thought. Then I said, you know what? Let me do this because something about Dave Regina that I need to improve on is playing the victim card. Right. And in my relationships, I tend to dwell on the things that have been done to me versus looking at the big picture and understanding maybe how that person got to where they are eventually at. So I actually took Katie up on this exercise and I ended up writing six pages. And again, this is something that I don't write like I really don't write, but the actual release of physically writing this down. And I said I was going to type it. You're like, nah, <laughs> no. nah, bro. You're not <laughs> typing that. You're going to write it. Right. You know, I, I started to create all these excuses. I put it off for a couple of days. You're like, yo, did you write that? Did you write that? Did you write that? I'm like, nah, I'll do it tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. So we as humans, we just make excuses to put things off. So I ended up doing this exercise. I write six pages in detail. Thoughts that I knew, I guess, were there, but I wasn't really conscious of ended up coming out on that paper. And my feelings as I was writing it, I am not joking. They completely were released after this. I didn't really set it on fire. I guess that's the final step that I need to that I need to do. But just the act, because I'm so far removed from actually writing things down, mm -hmm. I don't I, I hope it would bring the same level of change to someone's life that it did to me. It was extremely transformative for me. Mm -hmm. And I just want to, yes, go ahead, Zubi. I have a question. Yeah. If it takes you um one day to read 10 pages, how long does it take you to write six pages? Hey, yo. So this, <laughs> this actually took me, it, it took me a while. It took me like over an hour to, to write down. That's pretty um, good. That's that's, not, that's yeah, good writing. Know, it takes me an hour to read 10. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whether I'm doing that. Um, so no, I just really want to validate that, that, um, that thought because when you hear it from a woman, it's very easy. It's like, yeah, you know, women write things down. They journal. They do this. But as men, I don't know. Like, I want to say the majority of us really are not writing things down on a daily. Would you agree, TV? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. <laughs> like, it sounds like you're like, oh, that. like, let me go get my journal today. Like, I, we don't do it. Mm -hmm. I challenge you, whoever's listening, especially you men, to go <laughs> do something like this. Makes a difference. It does. Are you looking to elevate your brand with captivating visuals and immersive sound? Look no further than the home of the No Snooze podcast, Kai Visions Productions, your go-to destination for cutting-edge audio and video production. At Kai Visions, we don't just create content. We create experiences that leave a lasting impact. From podcasts, YouTube variety shows, sleek corporate videos, to attention-grabbing promotional campaigns, our team of experts is dedicated to turning your vision into reality. Choose Kai Visions for a production experience like no other. It's time to make your brand known. Contact us today at kaivisions at gmail.com or find us on Instagram at Kai Visions. Kai Visions Productions, where audiovisual excellence meets innovation. Now, back to the epi. Um, I was looking at your YouTube, which, by the way, um, will plug you in to everybody at the end on where to find you on YouTube. Um, but I saw a video and it was about in giving we receive. And essentially what it was, was you hosting a toy drive for children mm -hmm. who were sick in the hospital. 
and they were undergoing cancer treatments. Yes. Is that right? And you mentioned something huge, which I took away. And I was like, wow, like, I don't know why we don't do this more often about not needing like a status or a real platform to to do this. You mentioned in the YouTube video that you didn't really spend a lot of money to rent a space. Mm -hmm. You cooked food for the people who were bringing actual gifts. You put this out on your social media platforms and you ended up having a really, really nice event. And then you even took it a step further and you did a gift card giveaway of $50 for somebody, which I think you cheated because your mom ended up winning the <laughs> gift card. But Stop. besides besides that part, <laughs> can you talk to us about, I guess, what that did for you and the concept of in giving we end up receiving? Right. Well, one of the highest needs as a person is contribution. And we don't realize that. Don't you feel good when you give someone some like when you give? Don't how good do you feel? Mm -hmm. 100 percent. Right. And a lot of the times, you know, we're so used to like a lot. So many people expect to like receive, 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 not realizing that in order to receive, you actually have to give. And within just setting that up and it, we don't need a lot we don't we don't need to, it, and for me even that was like a big takeaway for myself because I hold myself back so many times and like oh well my status is like um, when I get to this level I'll be able to do this and we don't need we can actually do make a difference right now in you know little things and so can you go back to the question no, I really just wanted to know, you know, how you got what made you want to do that and how'd you come to the well, um I guess the proof right. of living in giving you end up receiving. Right. Well, I mean, I'm really passionate about kids. Um and I started thinking in what ways can I can I make a difference and how can I help them and um I started I looked up, you know, hospitals that would take toys and I realized that you know I can set up a little flyer and put it out there on my Instagram and it was just a bunch of friends and family and they showed up and bought a toy and you know we everybody bought like whatever you don't need something crazy but think about the difference that like it was such a it made my like it made me so happy and being able to go to the hospital and say, hey, look, this is what my friends and family gathered together for kids that are right now not in the best shape. And it just showed me that, you know, we don't need we don't need to have much mm. to make a difference. And that's with anything that goes with like um, I've always learned that I forget where I learned that contribution is our highest need, but it is. And you know, a lot of the times when we give, we're always going to get back, whether that's in how we feel and even just like bring this to relationships. Right. Or, you know, a lot of the times we get hurt in relationships and we don't we are so scared to like open up again and give love because we did it in the past relationship and then we get hurt and we're scared to give. But it all everything that you put out always comes back tenfold. So whether that's love, whether that's gifts, whether that's kindness, whatever it is, and just and do it without the like expecting to receive. Do it because you genuinely want to and you'll see how God will bless you because that's ultimately what we're here for. It's, you know, in, in the Bible, he talks about how we're here to take care of his land take care of people and take care of animals and treat them just as he wants us to like as what he's made us to be you know so mm. um so now i gotta go there because i've been on my own journey of you know a um relationship with with god and a, and a higher power and you know i listen to a lot of sermons i listen daily um i read a lot about it um and it's just something that i'm very you know, intrigued with, and I want more on your Instagram mm -hmm. specifically, it says God first. Mm -hmm. Have you always been like that? And if not, I guess, how has, how has God impacted your life? Mm -hmm. Um, I was not always like that. I mean, I grew up and the first thing my grandma would do, she would like, we would get on our knees before bed. We would pray. She would take me to church. I would actually like sneak out of church cause I didn't want to go to church. And it was, you know, um, even for a while when we went to Catholic school, it almost felt like an obligation. And I think that, you know, we grow up and it's kind of not cool to be, you know, 
uh, into God or whatever it is. But um, I think that I've seen so much of God in my life. And I think it was getting out of a 10 year relationship and being in the worst shape and just going back to what my grandma used to do, which was like get on my knees. And I started praying and I started to ask him to please help me and giving me the strength and being able to walk away because I knew it wasn't good for me. And mm -hmm. I just have seen him so many times. Like it, it, it it's no, it can't be anything else but God. Like right. even for my grandma, she was given probably like two weeks or a couple of weeks or whatever it was back in September. Two and weeks to what? To live. Um, She's sick? She has cancer. So just seeing the power of prayer. So go back to that. When when was she diagnosed? When was this? She was diagnosed the year before last year. A year before last year. She was given. The diagnosis of given gallbladder cancer. Gallbladder cancer, given two weeks to live. And then this past September, she was given like two but weeks. But now this or... is two years later. No, now this is just um, a no, couple but, months later. But when she was given. Okay. So when she was given two weeks to live. <laughs> Uh, when she was given two weeks to live, which was a couple months ago, which back in September, okay. this past September, gotcha. had been already a year of her diagnosis. Gotcha. Um, but everything just progressed really quickly. And, you know, she went from dancing, from speaking, from being able to do things on her own, from being able to eat on her own, from being able to take care of herself on her own and just being, you know, how we are, like mm -hmm. things that we take for granted. Right, right. Um, to rapidly getting really sick, like the the cancer progressing. This is after her treatment. She had already undergone um, radiation treatments. And just, I was in Dubai, I got a call. No, I was actually in Hong Kong. And I got a call from my mom. And she tells me, uh, you know, things are getting really bad and they're giving her only a couple weeks. And I was actually, I went to, to Dubai after and I was going to be there for a bit. Like I had no plans in coming back here. Um, and I was like, you know what? I have to go. Like, so I stayed probably in Dubai for a week after I went from Hong Kong to Dubai. I was there for a week and then I flew in and I was visiting her every single day, like going to my grandparents' house every day because you're, you're given a couple of weeks. Right. right yeah. And just seeing, and like, I, at that time I was already doing Bible study with my friends and every single morning praying um, for her, for, you know, our grandparents, because my friend also had a sick grandma. So just seeing the power of prayer. And um, I, I know that it can't be anything else but God. Mm. For like, for her to still be here today, it's now February. Right. This is way more than two, a couple weeks. It's now, you know, four months later and she's still here with us. And just, it's not only that, but I've just seen him do so many things that, you know, their prayers are real. And, you know, in the Bible, it talks a lot about how, you know, ask and you shall come to him in prayer. Um, and these things you don't have to, you know, you can do prayer within yourself and just people don't realize like prayers really do move mountains. And I do believe in the power of prayer. I The more that I've gotten to build a relationship with him, the more that I realize that, you know, there is a higher power and he is really real and he's listening to everything and... Yeah, I think that mm -hmm. as time has progressed, my relationship has, it, it's just been so many different factors and testaments within my life. That, I love that. Um, and even even with your, your grandmother, correct me if I'm wrong, your mom had plans to get married. In Cancun. When? Uh, last year. Um, no, yeah, well, I can't believe it. It's last year, mm -hmm. 111 uh, in Cancun. And then we had to do she had a radiation treatments during the same time so fast forward so we my mom had to actually call her for a wedding um and fast forward to this past november <laughs> my mom's like hey we're getting married so i literally along with like my some of my family members planned a wedding within one day just to, hours, just to make sure just that to make sure that my grandma was would. able to be there for my mom's wedding that's beautiful it really is yeah um all right, I want to get into into your book a little bit. Right. Elevated Glow, Transform from the Inside Out. From what I know, this is unique because this isn't just a book, but it's also a workbook attached to it. So you're reading, you're working with 11 life-changing lessons, 88 empowering affirmations, and a 66-day guided path. 
How did you like come up with the thought process to do something like this? It originally started off as a journal because I am so big on journals. And um, so last year, it was actually in January, it's going to be a year that I started creating this journal. And I went through, I grew through some things this past year. And I figured, you know, I've learned so much in my life. And why not, you know, the the journal within itself was, I created it as like, okay, I want it. I, I've gone through so many journals. That I was like, I don't have the perfect journal. Like if I had a journal that had this, 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 this. And so I was like, I'm going to create one. Like I'm going to create what I believe to be is the perfect journal. Something that is going to give me a checklist on the things that I know are going to make me better and are going to get me to grow and going to change me from within. Um, Cause ultimately we want so much change on the outside, but we don't realize that all we have to do is go within. And so uh, I wanted to create a habit tracker. And so from it being a journal to then growing through things last year, I was like, in August, I think it was, I believe in August, was when I decided to create, to do the book part of it. And I decided to write a book. Um, and the lessons was pretty much all the lessons that I've had to learn uh, to becoming who I am today. And I'm not perfect by any means, but I have come such a long way when it comes to, I'm more confident. I used to be super shy, super insecure, overweight, in the worst re toxic relationships ever and just not forgiving, holding on to things. I had a lot of limiting beliefs um, and I figured like, why not put this in like what I've learned and being able to transform myself? Why not do a guide that can transform other people? And so I put absolutely, I've done Bob Proctor programs. I'm not sure. What is that? Bob Proctor. Bob Proctor? Yeah, he's oh, okay, gotcha. he's uh, he's awesome. I've done a lot of his programs when it comes to paradigm shifting. Um, and I put everything that I've learned from Dr. Joe Dispenza, Joe Dispenza right? right? Yep. Um, from Don Miguel Ruiz. He's an he's a author of um, for The Four Agreements, Self-Love Mastery. Is it the self? It's love, no, The Love Mastery. Um but just like so many different things, a lot of Dr. Joe Dispenza, mm. um, even things from the Bible, right? Because where's the best place that we can honestly learn to forgive is really in the Bible. He talks about it. It's, God, it's like written in there so many times. So I reference where I've learned everything from as well and how it's made, like how it will make an impact, mm. you know? So not only do these lessons not only do I go into depth with those lessons, but then I also create like, let's say for the first lesson, it's on forgiveness. And then there's the exercise on doing letters of forgiveness. And then the second lesson, it goes into limiting beliefs. And so many times you don't realize that we're operating from unconscious patterns where who we are is how we've been programmed from from the ages of zero to seven is where our subconscious minds and who we are as people is like we take everything in every absolutely everything, even down to the food that we like. Right. Because ultimately, like if you grew up in, let's say, Africa and you were eating something else, you would you would be like, what is this type mm -hmm. of food? You know, but these are all things that are being programmed into our paradigms. And so. I have even with that lesson itself, I have questions that get you to really dig deep on what your limiting beliefs are. And I break it down to the top three topics, which are, you know, money, uh, relationships and love and as well as health and body, because I feel like these are the three main areas that people are always trying to like change or not happy within. At least for me, that has always was always a thing. And so, yeah, within that lesson alone, there's questions that dig deep into what your limiting beliefs are that you might not even realize that you have and creating new, creating a completely new identity because we can ultimately create a new self, brand new self image, but we're operating and we show up every single day 
from those unconscious patterns. So how we think, talk, breathe, like like how we show up, like how I walk, how I present myself, right? If you're someone who presents yourself as super shy and secure, a lot of the times you think that, oh, well, like this is just me. No, you can actually change that. You can show up to be more confident. You can show up to have, be somebody who has all this confidence in the world and just be completely different. And it's not that there's anything wrong with who we are, but if you want to create change, ultimately you have to go within. So all of the lessons are geared towards creating that change within you to create a change without you. CV, fire, no? Like, yeah, man. I, I mean, I, I think, and I'm not just saying this to, to pump you up, but like the difference between this and any other book that I've read is that this basically forces you. One, you... Sh need to purchase the book if you want growth, right? Like that's uh, people just buy books. But with your book now, I feel like you have to really want this because you're going to not only read something, but now you have the ability to do it right then and there to go work. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of books you got to like read. And then if you want to like implement things, you got to go somewhere else to write it. So the one stop shop thing, I think is super unique. Thank you for sharing all your insecurities, by the way, because just by looking at you, I don't think the majority of people would have ever thought any of that stuff. There's a concept now that I've become so aware of, and it's basically you are most qualified to help the person that you used to be. Mm -hmm. And it's talked about a lot in the personal and professional development space. But a lot of us, as we're trying to search and we're trying to find for our purpose, Really, all we need to do is look at the person that we were, take the person that you are now and look at the steps that got you there. Right. So for me, a lot of, you know, my personal insecurities stem from the health and wellness space. Right. Crohn's disease growing up, I was one hundred and fifty three pounds, 15 different medications, um, you know, carrying toilet paper in my backpack, being bullied as, as a kid. Right. To now mm -hmm. people seeing me like this. But it's like, oh, well, I really should be focusing on the person that I used to be and go help that person. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what you're doing with this book. And I, I really think it's going to have an extreme level of success. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy for you. Thank you. Um, so I want everybody to go get this book. But I want your top two, I guess, favorite lessons. You said there's 11, 11 lessons in this 11 book, 11 right? lessons, And right. don't give me forgiveness because we already spoke about that one. <laughs> Um, I think that one of my favorite lessons is scripting for sure. What What is that? <laughs> scripting. And I have a whole like um, section in the work in the journal side of it to do it every single day. But scripting is when you write something down as if it's already happened. So you, in a sense, are writing and you're putting the feeling um it's not just about writing, but there's something that happens when you put pen to paper. And when a lot of the times when people journal, they are so focused on what's going on and why their outer reality is happening. But the reason they don't really realize why things are reoccurring is because of the focus. What you focus on grows like where energy energy is just is scientific you know where energy goes that's where where attention grows and everything everything just becomes more of that where so, energy goes your attention that's where your attention grows, grows. yeah <sighs> so that's you know fire. That's, <laughs> bow, bow, bow. <laughs> that's fire but you know it's just it, it's what we focus on that expands and so um a lot of the time when we're journaling we don't realize that it, a lot of time people are writing, you know, continuously focusing on the recre then recreating that because that's what they're focusing on. Now, with scripting, it's you're writing something as if it's already happened, whether it's a relationship, like your dream person, like whatever it is, you're writing it down as if it's, you know, even within yourself, like recreating yourself, you can completely create a new identity. Have you done this? Yeah, I have. You have? I have. Can, so obviously. <laughs> can you give us an example? <laughs> can you give us an example on something that you've scripted into your life? I scripted my dream man. <laughs> no, but I, I've, I've scripted even myself and how I wanted to be in my confidence and um, just how I wanted to show up. And I took, you know, it's uh, there's this book called Psycho Cybernetics and... 
within that book, he talks about how, you know, you can go for plastic surgery and there's two types of people where they'll come out and they'll still be unhappy but it's because of what's going on within, right? And then there's other people that are really happy with the outcome. But some people go and and no matter what they do, they can go get their nose done 50 million times and they'll still be unhappy with the outcome. But that's ultimately because of, you know, what's going on within. So ultimately what the what I've done is I've take you can take little pieces of, you know, different characters. Look at yourself as like an avatar. And you can go to the people that you look up to the most. And it's not like you're being that person, but whatever qualities that you admire within someone else, you can have like you you also have within you. Even if you don't identify with that now. Like, Even if, like you if, don't you're, if you're somebody that's shy, you said you were shy. Yeah. Um. So you're taking that and you're scripting like, you know, I'm a very confident person who loves to speak in front of crowds. No, you're scripting. Yeah. Like, you know, I've done this and I've like done like as if it's already happened. And not only a scripting it, but like also that feeling because feeling is super important. So you're writing down the feeling of you already. Be, if you're a shy person, let's you're use that feeling example. it. You're feeling like, it. You're you're in the crowd. You you see everything. You had a successful you speech. To, you went backstage. Everyone's still cheering because you killed it. You know, you get off. You meet and greet with everybody. Like, is that how in-depth you're talking yes, about? Yes. You I have to, it. like, go super in-depth and almost to the point that when you're writing, you can see these things. Like, it's so vivid. And there's a saying where it's like what you can see in your mind, you can hold in your hands. And so it's just that it's so vivid. Like, <laughs> you can you write it down and it, being so vivid and that feeling really feel, that feeling is the most important part because you're impressing your subconscious mind. So I talk about in um, the scripting part, the times that it's most important because it's impressing your mind and your brain. And this is when like your brain is going from beta to, to data and like all the, there's just like so much science behind it. Um, even like doing like little phone calls, like fake phone calls. But like pretending like you're on the phone with your best friend, like this is the is something that an exercise that I have them do. But, you know, on the phone with your best friend as if like saying it with so much joy as if it's already happened. Your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what is real and what is not. Right. And a lot of the times we're whatever is going on in there, when you impress that now that goes to your conscious mind and that's what like shows up. And so that I would say is one of my favorite mm. lessons. Yeah. You know what I love too about you is how, um, how in detail you are, you know, it's not just cause you hear the law of attraction and manifestation and visualization and all these things, but you're giving, you're giving very like your specificity on it mm -hmm. is something I'm very intrigued by. And CV, I think we have a new nickname for her, the little science, if you will. <laughs> all right. Because I refer to myself as the big science. So you are now the little science. Oh, okay. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> um, and now give me another lesson. Like, I guess that's, you know, something that, that you have, I mean, all of them are, are major life lessons and life changing lessons, but one that really stands out to you. I would say... I mean, I like all of them because of course, it, yeah, yeah. It, they all tie into mm -hmm. one another, um, even the creating the new identity. But I would say probably the self-love one. There's mm. one on just like self-love. And I think the reason as to why uh, self-love is so important um, is because for so long I didn't love myself and a lot of the times we think we love ourselves and we think we're showing up from a place of can I stop you on that go ahead what do you mean you didn't love yourself and what was the what was the extent of that like what did that look like that looked like not showing up for myself that looked like not keeping my word to myself when I said I was going to do something you don't realize that whenever you tell yourself let's say oh, I'm going to go to the gym and then you don't go to the gym you're breaking your word to yourself and you are you lose confidence lose every confidence you every single time you're becoming a little more insecure because you told yourself you were going to do something and now you're not doing it and so for so long even just putting a partner first and or you know it's like you for me it's like you have to put god first then you then your partner whoever and for so long i didn't i didn't do any of that stuff i didn't realize that i was not filling my own cup up and I was so quick to pour into others 
Um, and, you know, f- from a young child, from being like growing up, I was bullied. I was uh, given a lot of words of discouragement, and I would say, which kind of played a big part in a lot of insecurities and things that I grew up with mentally thinking like, well, I'm too fat, I'm too this, I'm too, you know, and so not realizing that, you know, I am my hardest, I'm the hardest, I'm my hardest critic. And I give others so much love and showing myself that grace and showing up for myself and what I say I'm going to do and doing it. And that build up a confidence a little bit by little by little, as well as doing mirror work, things like, you know, and even Wait, what, mirror work. Stay on that. What is that? Mirror work, right? Mirror so, work. Mirror work. So how many times do you go and you tell people that you love them or that they're this or that they're that? But how how many times have you looked in the mirror in your own eye, oh in boy. your soul and told yourself, like, I love you? Oh boy! Um, <laughs> you want me, you want me to be honest, I think you just asked the wrong person. The wrong person you right? asked the wrong person because <laughs> to let listen. I mean, I have well, a couple. That's why you're I have a confident. Couple, but I have a couple of physical insecurities about myself, which I'm not going to share because I'm not going to manifest that. But I will say this: I do happen to wake up, and you know, my daughter Callie Michelle, she she has adopted this habit as well. We walk over to the mirror and we tell ourselves that it's going to be a beautiful day. And I give myself a little a little pat on the back for, you know, I'm, I'm a nice, handsome, strong guy. And you my are. daughter, you know, she's three and a half and she tells the mirror how beautiful she is. That's amazing. But you um, don't realize what you're, that you're actually doing for her at such a young age and how she's going to grow up with confidence and how she, that is making you. You don't realize that the difference that you're making for her now i have my niece she knows she knows she tells herself you're smart you're confident you're beautiful you're strong and she like tells herself these things and Mm -hmm. she knows it and she's the most confident girl that you (laughs) will meet um but it's ultimately because that is what she tells herself and i i know that it's so important between those ages and so mirror work would be you know this is why you're probably so confident and (laughs) how you are but you know it's just you're you're talking to yourself in your in your eyes and your soul because do you really know how powerful you are do you really understand like how magical you are like if you actually took the time to like sit there and like get to know yourself even with reading the bible because i think within reading the bible it's shown me how god's made me and it's also shown me how to view myself in that light okay so taking you away from the mirror, going to the Bible oh. selfishly. Is there a version of this Bible that I can understand? Because I really, really want to want to read it. Right. But it, it's very hard because I get lost. And I think a lot of people really can relate to this. They get lost in the translation and you're trying to translate things. Um, do you have a specific version? There's that you so use? many different versions of the Bible. Um, I really enjoy, and it's not to say like, oh, this one's better or, you know, but it is a con- con- uh, contemporary version of it, mm-hmm. which makes it allows me to understand it better. Right. And a lot of people are like, well, no, you should be reading this one or we should be reading this one. Hon- honestly, if you're understanding the word of God, I think that that's the most important thing. Right. Like, so I would say that the message is it's called the message. Okay. Um, and then ultimately you can go to other ones. You right. can go to you the NIV. You, you can grow from there. And what I really like is the Bible app. You can see all the different versions. I know yours does it. <sighs> I know, but I struggle <laughs> we'll too because it. because the voice of the person it puts me to sleep. I can't have... read it at night. That's yeah, another but thing. this is why the physical copy. Um, I'm falling asleep. Made, I gotta be honest with you. The physical copy has really made a big difference for me and in incorporating that into my routine. Mm-hmm. Um, that there's this. My favorite quote is: "God's gift to us is more talent and ability that we can ever hope to use in this lifetime. Our gift to God is to develop as much of that talent and ability as we can in this lifetime. And so when we get to know ourselves and we take a second to look at ourselves in the mirror, you know, and just fully speak life into ourselves, because we're always like giving, 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 giving to others, like speak life into ourselves. Um, your confidence grows and you just show up differently. And Mm. so I think that that would be my favorite lesson. Not that I say, Oh, go read the Bible in the book in my, that lesson. But I do talk about mirror work and how it's important. I do talk about jealousy because a lot of the time we think, you know, I've grown 
I'm so used to, I can pick up these kind of things, right? With jealousy and everything like that. And a lot of times people don't realize that when you're jealous of a person or whatever, like there's no reason to be jealous because you're only jealous because you, there's a part of you that wants that, that can, that actually can get that. So instead of being jealous, you say, hey, no, like this person's dope and I can't wait to have that, you know, instead of being jealous of that, like relationship that you see on social media and you're like, oh, like, I wish I had that. That's so like, be like, oh my God, that's so dope. I know that I'm going to have that too. Because the only reason why you're jealous is because that there's a version of you that already has that, that can have that, you know, that Mm -hmm. does have Mm -hmm. that, but you need to now work yourself up to being to understanding that you're worthy of it and you won't receive anything that you want until you fully believe that you're worthy. A lot of times we're, we're our own, like we're our own, you know, worst enemy. We're not bringing these things that we want because we don't believe we're worthy of it. You know, we don't think we're deserving. We don't think we're enough. And that lesson really helps you in understanding how worthy you are of it. So. Could I add um, something in here? Absolutely. My brother, something that you said, literally seconds ago really like hit home and um i just want to share it with you guys if you guys Mm -hmm. don't mind yeah it's gonna relate so um you know i've been going through some things as of late and i found this uh i was watching this um this little podcast on on youtube and uh, i wrote this quote down and i've been reading it to myself and it kind of speaks to what you were talking about um i kind of self-titled it and it's paraphrased so i apologize but it's what you say to yourself matters and it goes, um, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. What you think impacts what you believe, which impacts how you feel, which impacts what you do. Your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Be careful how you think. What you think shapes your life. No one is more influential in your life than you because no one talks to you more than you. Mm. That's so true. That is so true. Yep. And even like there's like this like saying like I use like this tear method, it's T-E-A-R, which your thoughts equals whatever you're thinking of, that's going to result into what your emotions are, which are going to be the driving force to what your actions are, which are going to be the driving force to what your results are. So thoughts, so thoughts are going to equal your emotions, which are going to your emotions are going to drive what actions you then take. Thoughts, emotions, action, results. Mm-hmm. T E A R, tear, bang, tear. fire. Mm-hmm. No, CV, I love that. That was awesome. That really was. For real, what, um, you know what podcast it was? Yes, but I don't know it off the top of my head. I have to go look for it. It yeah, was, yeah. um, I, I'll share it with you. Yeah. I, I have to look Very for it. Very cool. Um, I like that. Um, thank you for sharing those those lessons. And the, the, the mirror thing is funny because I think I double mirror because <laughs> basically you're, you're physically in the mirror, but you're also mirroring he lives the action house of that, mirrors. You, that, you, that you do. That's great. I got to get myself a mirror room That's in my great. house. I really right should, right? It's just mirrors on the ceilings and the walls. I just walk in like, woo, I am I here. I love you. <laughs> I love you. Yes. Great beard. Um, no grays in that beard. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. It's surprising oh how this guy gets out of the house. He'll be there. All- <laughs> I know. Well, it takes me a long, you know, my, it literally takes me two seconds to get ready. It just takes me a long time to get out of the house because I pass every mirror and I'm like, oh, ah, 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 that's my guy. That's him. This episode is brought to you by Hudson Valley Teeth Whitening. Hudson Valley Teeth Whitening is an experienced teeth whitening salon where you can get up to seven shades lighter with just a 60 or 90 minute session in a professional and relaxing setting. They offer the most superior product coupled with the highest quality of customer service available to get you instant results. Whether you have an important event to attend, such as a wedding, birthday, anniversary, interview, or you are just unhappy with the color of your teeth, this LED light technology helps whiten your teeth fast and easy. At Hudson Valley Teeth Whitening, they understand how important your smile is to you. And speaking from personal experience, you'll be guided by highly efficient staff in a relaxing environment to reach your desired shade. Let them know you're a friend of Dave's from the No Snooze podcast and connect with them at HudsonValleyTeethWhitening.com or on Instagram at HV Teeth Whitening. Now, back to the epi. I saw on um, social media, and I I know obviously the work that you've done um, overseas in Kenya. Specifically, right? Yeah. Kenya? Yeah. Um, tell me what that experience was like. And I guess, well, why you went there. Mm-hmm. And then the perspective of like being a complainer in, you know, as I guess Americans today. 
Right. So, I mean, I was approached by my good friends and Kaina, she actually runs a whole um, charity out there, um, her and Shri. And she told me it would be a great opportunity. So I was like, you know what? This I've always wanted to do this. Like one of my biggest dreams is to actually build schools in third world countries. And it was the most life. I like I went there with the intention of going to help. What I didn't realize was that they were actually doing me like they were what they did for me was more than I could have done for them. In giving, we receive. In giving, we receive. Mm. Right. And my experience there just completely changed my outlook on everything, on how I view things, on, you know, the littlest things that we take for granted, such as water. Um, seeing them, how happy they are with just like a bot. Like we would uh, collect the little things that are around a water bottle. The little plastic pieces? The little plastic pieces. And they would get so excited over that. And seeing that they have like no phones, no nothing. And they're like they're eating with their hands that they're like uh doing the well thing to get their water every little thing and you see how happy they are with nothing it makes you like take a second back and be like what am i doing like, did it take what? you a second to adjust because like you know you, you like glamming up obviously right, right? You're, you're very beautiful person inside and out Thank but like you. nails done hairs done like so i didn't even go did, with my nails done no no but did it take you a second to like adjust to that and see like wow like i'm abnormal in terms of this environment um i didn't take a second to adjust i think with the food it took me a second to adjust what are you eating I didn't really eat. <laughs> like, I just ate like probably, like... like live game? Like, no, what are they eating? No, they eat, like... I mean, well, we stayed where we were staying. We were driving to the orphanage every day. And, you know, even, like, from where we were staying, like, that is, like, the best of the best. And that was, like, you know, the shower and the toilet are in the same... It's like Manhattanville. <laughs> Kind of. Like, <laughs> Spellman. Like Spellman, yeah. There <laughs> um, but yeah, just seeing, like for me, it didn't really, I went there already not being really happy with what was going on in my life. And for me, being in those conditions was honestly so much more, I was so much more happier and I was so much more at peace. And I was just so much like the way that I felt was just like honestly i i can't really even put it into words compared to like living a luxurious life in miami like it took me to be there to be like what like what am i doing you know when it came to i was in a toxic relationship and so for me to be there and be so happy and even like seeing how just like the kids were just happy and they they don't realize like for me, they changed my perspective on everything. I, I'm someone who, you know, I think we all tend to complain about things, but it made me realize like how fortunate I am to have to live the life that I live, to have the roof over my head that I have, to even be able to have the shower that I have, to the toilets that we have, like things, little things. Like I was sleeping on a really hard bed and just like having all of these things and just being there with the kids and seeing how happy they were and just us being there, you know, like they didn't care about, you know, anything, whether we brought them anything, whatever it is, you know, we had taken them like clothes and everything like that. But for them, that didn't mean anything. It was the fact that we were showing up, that we were dancing and singing with them and mm -hmm. little things that, you know, it just made me realize, like, even like with the kids now in today's day, how spoiled they are here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. when it comes to having a, a iPad and like having all of these things. And those kids don't have none of that over there. They are happy with just a, a empty water bottle and being outside and being outside dancing in the rain singing whatever it is yeah that that's the hard part i think as a as a parent um now is just like you know because you do want to spoil your child because that's the natural you know the right. natural want right you don't want your child to struggle financially you don't want your child to struggle in any way but for me like specifically i try very hard to implement like you know little lessons along the way so like yes you do have all these toys and you're very fortunate to have these toys but now you got to clean up 
Mm-hmm. Eight times out of ten, I end up cleaning them up anyway. <laughs> but you know, like it, it, that's the challenge I think right. um, here in, in America because we're so we're so spoiled. I mean, the things I complain about, I do not identify as a complainer. <laughs> we were all talking about this, the three of us, outside uh, of the air or off the air here. Um, but just the little conversations that we've had, and you're like, oh, you're complaining, you're complaining. Like I don't, you don't even realize it, you know. So I think that perspective, and, and honestly, kudos to you for. For going out there and choosing to to do that type of work it's a really beautiful beautiful thing and i can see how passionate you are about it thank you yeah i love little i don't know it's something about kids i don't know what it is they're drawn to me i'm drawn to them mm-hmm. um i know that my purpose has to do with kids and that's why even i wrote the book um it's not more so for kids my dedication is to kids but it's more so you know I think that if we make a difference in how we raise our kids and or what we say to our kids or how like little things make such a big difference. And the book within itself is like geared towards changing whatever limiting beliefs are instilled within us as kids. And, you know, my main focus, like I really want to take this book to high schools and because even within like parenting and this is nothing like I think that parents do such a great job with what they know best. And so the way people parent is based on how they were raised and, but how they were raised was based off of how they were raised. So we can't take it as like, take it personal or whatever it is, because if you take a second to think about it, it's like, it's all going down from generations, but it's up to us to, in a sense, break that Mm. in, in the difference that we decide to make. And so I think that when it comes to kids, I feel like I'm so passionate about it because one, I was bullied, but also I think that if it, if I can make a difference in someone's life and how they like the confidence that they grew up to having, like that alone is enough for me, you know, because I wish I had that, you know, and it's not Mm. that I grew up with the worst the worst child like that is not the case either but we don't realize how little things really do create little traumas you know and even as adults now uh, one of our main things is to go back into our childhood and to heal those versions that were hurt or had little traumas and we can do you know inner child healing meditations like things like that really do make a difference in there's a saying like when you go back, you like in a sense slink forward. Right. It's a yeah, slingshot effect. It's a slingshot. Exactly. So for me, it's like preventing that already to having to because if you're going to go back to like all those times, you know, mm-hmm. so if we can make a change now as adults in what we do with the youth and what we speak into them, mm-hmm. then, you know, I think that's great to they're the future generations. Mm. I'm not just saying this, Katie. I, I really, I, I, there's a lot of alignment, you know, between our our thought process here. Um, I love what you do. I'm extremely grateful uh, because you know you even you shift my perspective just through our conversations, and I want to make that very clear because I do a lot of self, personal, professional development work, uh, but your lens you know, just in a short period of time has already began to, I feel like, bring me personally to to a new level, which is not something that I can say about a lot of people. You know what I mean? That from from the bottom of my heart. I thank you so much for coming on this podcast. um, And I'm very happy we did this. Before we close out, though, please give everybody an opportunity to follow you and also where they can pre-order your book. Okay. Uh, W... Oh. (laughs) <laughs> oh you <laughs> um they can follow me at katie k-a-t-i-e underscore cepeda c-e-p-e-d-u-h duh that's on instagram <laughs> duh i did that on purpose yeah, now I, I can't change it because <laughs> it's all over my youtubes um and the book is on www.katiecepeda k-a-t-i-e c-e-p-e-d-a dot com slash pre dash order good and cv will uh will link that there um anything that you that we didn't touch on that you want to share with anybody no i'm just grateful for you and thank you for having me on here and yeah that's it awesome 
Um, guys, we're very grateful for you as the listener. Uh, please continue to share the show. That is our one main ask in 2024. The growth of this show over the past couple months um, has really just been because of the word of mouth, whether you're sharing it on Instagram, sharing it on YouTube, texting it to a friend. We really, really appreciate you. And we appreciate all the feedback that you guys provide to us. So continue to do that. Um, you guys can shop the latest merch at nosnoozeshop.com. And until next time, stop snoozing. Get up and get after it. And go get that book. This book is fire, Katie. <laughs> it really is fire. Thank you guys for tuning in. That's another Epi in the Books. You can follow us on Instagram at Most News Podcast and leave us a five-star review wherever you listen to us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, No Snooze. Shop the latest merch at nosnoozeshop.com. Come on.